what we got here is a pretty standard uh, processing sketch. And by showing you this, I, I want to sh demonstrate what I've done uh, in processing to enable myself to, to code in Groovy instead of Java. Uh, if we run it here, you'll see what it does. Not particularly exciting, but um, it'll serve my purposes. Uh, one of the th oh, okay. um, that's running it with uh, with the standard processing uh, run tool. Uh, I've created a tool here for running using a uh, processing kind of a code name I've created for processing in Groovy. Uh, it should do just the same thing. Yeah, there we go. And uh, of course, what um, uh, Groovy is a scripting language, which enables us to to parse the script in real time, which um, which gives us a nice uh, set of new features like um, uh, live coding. Uh, you can see the the animation there. We're not going to disturb the state by restarting the script when we update the the color values, for example. Uh, so just by um, pressing save, the, the script gets updated. Uh, at the moment I can't uh, change any of the actions in the uh, processing IDE because the, the tools API for the processing IDE is, uh, is quite new and is uh, somewhat limited. But um, what I can show you now is um, a few things that this uh, Groovy syntax brings us. One of the things is that uh, Groovy isn't strongly typed, which means uh, uh, I'll show you here. And um, I have to I have to cast this uh, variable here because uh, it's an integer, and if I divide it, um, I'm going to get um, some unexpected results. So if we we run this in Java. Of course, we see it's uh, uh, animated quite nicely. Uh, if I get rid of this, uh, the animation is gone, and it's just gonna it's just gonna flip because uh, an integer one divided by two uh, is not uh, is zero point five, unfortunately. Uh, however, in a Groovy is um, uh, doesn't really have an integer. It uh, uses um, uh, big numbers or something like that. So if we run it, um, Groovy is still nicely animated. So already we're um, simplifying our syntax a bit. Uh, Groovy, of course, we can we can ditch our semicolons, which is nice. Cleans up the syntax a wee bit. Voila, works. And uh, one of the things I noticed explaining processing to beginners is that uh, this concept of void here, yeah, where why do we have to write the void? It's a bit difficult to understand. So uh, in Groovy, we can say it doesn't matter what we're uh, returning. It could be nothing. It could be a string. It could be an integer. And the syntax looks a wee bit nicer as well. So just to show that um, that is actually working, we do a bit of live coding and everything's still working. Okay, what uh, Groovy brings us as well is not just um, a few syntax niceties, uh, it also gives us a number of uh, power features. Like uh, they have a really nice for, uh, for loop for example. Like, um, for in uh, 0 to 10, nice and easy to understand, and we'll add a bit of, bit of alpha in here so we can see our boxes. Hmm, it's going, okay, 
I'm doing the same books. Over the same box over over itself. So there we go. More alpha. There we go. So this all runs through the, the tool interface. It's um, kind of uh, quite alpha at the moment. There, there are a number of problems. Um, some of the problems come with running libraries. At the moment I've gotten um, fluid forms libs of course is, um, is running perfectly well. Uh, one of the things I have to do is that the script isn't actually being run by processing. So by passing um, this and I'm passing the wrong object. So I'm, when I'm using processing, I have to pass a handle which is actually behind the scenes to the processing applet. It's a bit of a disadvantage right now and I haven't worked out a way to get around that at the moment. But all in good time. Um, of course, what uh, fluid forms libs gives us is he moves everything to the middle of the stage, so we don't need that anymore. And with any luck, if I run this, I should have mouse navigation. Great. There we go. Um, I haven't managed to get uh, um, OpenGL working yet, uh, but. Um, apart from that, I don't see any reason why other libraries shouldn't work. But um, as I said, it's uh, it's quite alpha. I haven't tested it with a hell of a lot yet. This is really just a, a proof of concept to uh, to show you where I'm going or where it, where I'd like to go. Uh, if you want to try it out yourself, uh, you can download uh, Fluid Forms Libs. And then you can install it like other processing tools are installed. Uh, this is kind of similar to installing a library. Like we've got the libraries folder here and Fluid Forms Libs. Uh, to install the tool, I install, uh, create a directory in the tools uh, folder called Grooceessing. Uh, and then within that, there's a tool. And then we have, um, uh, I don't think we need that, that's an extracted uh, jar file. Just the um, the groovy jar and the fluid forms libs jar and then uh, you restart processing and with any luck your uh, run grooving tool should be installed. Um, this is all open source. Uh, you can uh, have a look at the code on the uh, uh, Google Code. The links are all on the, the Fluid Forms Libs library page. So um, if you're interested in how it's working, uh, have a squiz in the source code. And uh, if you want to help me with this, uh, I'd be very, very grateful for, for help. Uh, I think this really could improve processing. I've uh, written a blog article about a few other things we can do to improve the syntax. Uh, one of the things would be to get rid of the the curly braces here, like um, like Python has. This would uh, involve a bit of uh, parsing of the code before we run it, because it's not something that uh, that Groovy itself supports. And another thing that we can uh, do I think we can get rid of the, these curly brackets and a few other niceties but um, uh, have a look on uh, onato.com and if you go to the blog you should be able to find uh, my article about um, how I'd like to improve processing anyway uh, give it a go yourself give me some feedback cheers toodaloo